Have you ever wondered why some toys are more expensive than others? Can you guess what makes prices go up and down? We'll chat with Farmer Quinn today and learn more about Apple economics. Hello, Farmer Quinn. Hey there, Aldo. Hi there, kids. I'm Farmer Quinn, and I grow apples in my orchard. I also make delicious apple pies and other treats in my bakery. Do you like apples and apple pies? I hope so, because today I'm going to teach you some basic economics concepts using apples as examples. Have you ever gone to the store and had to pick between different pies? How did you decide which pie to buy? Which pie is the best pie for your money? We study questions like these in economics. Economics is the study of how people make choices about what to produce, consume, and exchange. It helps us understand how the world works and how we can make better decisions. Oh, I want to make better decisions. Knowing more about how the world works is important for kids like me. Indeed, Aldo. One of the most important concepts in economics is supply and demand. Supply is how much of something is available. Demand is how much of something people want. The price of something is determined by the interaction of supply and demand. For example, look at these apples. I have red apples, green apples, and yellow apples. Which one do you think is the most popular? I have a guess. How about you kids? Let's see what you think. Ooh. Wow, it looks like most of you prefer red apples. That means the demand for red apples is higher than the demand for green or yellow apples. But what about the supply? Well, in my orchard, I have more green and yellow apples than red apples. That means the supply of red apples is lower than the supply of green or yellow apples. So, what do you think will happen to the price of red apples? I think the price will go up. That's a good guess, Aldo. Kids, what do you think? That's right, kids. When the demand is high and the supply is low, the price goes up. That's why I charge more for red apples than for green or yellow apples. You can see the price tags here. This way, I can make more money from selling red apples and also encourage people to buy more of the other apples that I have plenty of. Another important concept in economics is cost and benefit. Cost is what you give up to get something, and benefit is what you gain from getting something. When you make a choice, you have to consider the costs and benefits of your options. For example, look at these apple pies. I have apple pie, apple crumble, apple tart, and apple turnover. Which one do you think is the most expensive to make? I think I know. What do you think, kids? Let's see your guess. That's correct, kids. Apple pie is the most expensive to make because it requires more ingredients and more time than the other treats. That means the cost of making apple pie is higher than the cost of making the other treats. But what about the benefit? Well, apple pie is also the most popular and the most delicious treat that I sell. That means the benefit of making apple pie is higher than the benefit of making the other treats. So, what do you think will happen to the price of apple pie? Let's see your answer. That's right, kids. When the cost is high and the benefit is high, the price goes up. That's why I charge more for apple pie than for the other treats. You can see the price tags here. This way, I can cover the cost of making apple pie and also make a profit from selling it. I really need to get into the apple business. It is hard work, Aldo. But I'm sure that you are up to the task. Another important concept in economics is allocation of resources. 
Allocation of resources is about how people decide how to use the scarce resources they have to satisfy their wants and needs. Resources are anything that can be used to produce something else, such as land, labor, capital, and time. Oh, maybe I should start an apple orchard in my backyard. My backyard is land, right? Yes, Aldo. Your backyard is indeed land. But what would you have to give up to turn your backyard into an apple orchard? I would probably have to get rid of the swing set that I have. Yes, Aldo. That's right. It would be harder to play in your backyard. We call that an opportunity cost. When resources are scarce, we have to choose what we do wisely. What do you mean by resources being scarce? Scarcity means that there is not enough of something to satisfy everyone's wants and needs. A good example is your backyard. You don't have enough room to grow an apple orchard. Keep your swing set and have room to play in your backyard space. That's a good point. The land in my backyard is scarce. I can't do everything I want or need in that space. Let's look at my orchard as another example. I have many apple trees, but not all of them are the same. Some of them produce more apples than others. Some of them produce better quality apples than others. And some of them require more water and fertilizer than others. That means I have to make choices about how to allocate my resources to grow the best apples possible. I know how you feel. I run into the same problem when I am setting up my webs. I don't have enough silk to set up a web that covers all of the area that I'd like to. So I allocate my silk for webs where I think they provide the most benefit. That is a great example, Aldo. This brings us back to opportunity cost. How do I make these choices? Well, I use a principle called opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the value of the next best option that you give up when you make a choice. For example, if I choose to water this tree that produces red apples, I have to give up watering another tree that produces green apples. The opportunity cost of watering the red apple tree is the amount of green apples that I could have grown instead. To make the best choice, I have to compare the costs and benefits of each option and choose the one that gives me the most net benefit. Net benefit is the difference between the benefit and the cost of an option. How do you measure the costs and benefits of each option? Well, I use a tool called marginal analysis. Marginal analysis is the study of how much an additional unit of something affects the total outcome. For example, if I water one more tree, how many more apples will I get? If I use one more bag of fertilizer, how much better will the quality of the apples be? If I spend one more hour in the orchard, how much more profit will I make? Marginal analysis helps me find the optimal level of resource allocation, where the marginal benefit equals the marginal cost. That means I get the most net benefit from using my resources. Wow, I need to try marginal analysis when I set up my next spiderweb. I should spend the smallest amount of time possible to catch the most flies. Yes, Aldo. Marginal analysis can definitely help you with that. I hope you learned something new today, kids. Thanks for spending time with us today, Farmer Quinn. Thanks for inviting me on the show, Aldo. Economics is a fascinating subject that can help you understand the world better. And remember, if you ever visit my farm, you can always buy some apples and apple pies from me. They are the best in town. Thank you for watching Sophia the Adventurer. If you found this video interesting, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.